Welcome to Sustainable Sense, where we invest in climate defense. You're in for our hot take on all things money, markets, and the environment. Hey guys, today's episode begins on a positive note. I mean, why start a podcast with a downcast when we can highlight the incredulous steps made to progress climate protection? So let's talk about the IRA. No, don't worry, not that IRA. I'm talking about the Inflation Reduction Act. This bill is not just your average run-of-the-mill bill. The enactment of the Inflation Reduction Act in August of 2022 represents a historic milestone as one of Congress's most impactful measures to address clean energy and climate change. This has ushered in a new era of American innovation and creativity aimed at reducing consumer expenses and propelling the global clean energy economy. According to analyses conducted by multiple energy modeling groups, implementing this plan would result in a reduction of nearly 1 billion tons of carbon dioxide. That's quite a lot. It also aims to achieve a 40% reduction in America's carbon emissions by 2030. Although it falls slightly short of the official target of a 50% reduction by 2030, it brings us significantly closer to that goal, which is obviously a win. So how does the IRA bill work exactly? The Inflation Reduction Act channels almost $400 billion in government funding towards clean energy, aiming to significantly reduce the country's carbon emissions before the end of the decade. If you don't know, carbon emissions by the burning of fossil fuels and other non-renewable resources is a major cause of climate change, since these gases blanket the Earth and trap heat inside. This messes up the internal balance of the Earth. I mean, if you were the Earth, would you want to be constantly suffocated under a warm blanket? I wouldn't. The Inflation Reduction Act primarily utilizes market-driven incentives such as tax credits, direct subsidies, and other rewards to encourage private investment in renewable energy sources. Okay, time out. So what is a tax credit exactly? It's just a pretty simple concept with a kind of complicated name. So basically, a tax credit is a type of financial incentive provided by the government that reduces the amount of tax you owe. It kind of works like a discount on your taxes. So when you qualify for a tax credit, you can subtract the credited amount directly from the total tax you owe. For example, as some of you Tesla owners like myself may know, under the IRA bill, people were offered a $7,500 tax credit for the Model Y car. This option is attractive for both consumers, businesses, and the environment, which is why so many people bought the Model Y car during this time. Of course, the bill doesn't just incentivize corporations to do sustainable practices. The bill also incentivizes consumers like you and your family to use renewable energy sources. What better way to increase the usage of renewable energy sources than to make them more affordable and accessible? I mean, one of life's greatest incentives is money. So approximately $43 billion in tax credits or tax discounts provided by the IRA are designed to decrease emissions by making electrical vehicles, otherwise known as EVs, energy-efficient appliances, rooftop solar panels, geothermal heating systems, and home batteries more affordable. Think about this. What is currently stopping you from purchasing EVs or something like solar panels for your home? If the answer was money, you'll be glad to know that the IRA bill should eliminate your money concerns and your dreams of affordable solar panels and electric vehicles will come true. Starting in 2023, eligible EVs can receive a tax credit of up to $7,500 for new vehicles, like the Model Y example, and up to $4,000 for used vehicles. Whew, that was a lot of information. Now it's time for a quick trivia break. Here's today's question. Which of the following gases is a greenhouse gas? Here are the options. Nitrous oxide, methane, water vapor, all of the above, or none of the above. Again, the options are nitrous oxide, methane, water vapor, all of the above, or none of the above. Have your answer? We'll reveal the correct answer at the end of the show, so stay tuned. Now back to the show. Many fear the IRA bill comes with repercussions, but fear not. The IRA bill will revitalize our current economy. 
clean energy from solar, wind, water, and other renewable sources will more than triple. And in addition to this, a majority of the cars and trucks on the road will be electric. The electric vehicle takeover has just begun, folks. And last but not least, over 1 million jobs across the country will be created for clean energy, clean manufacturing, and clean production. Through this bill, America will rise as a leader in sustainable energy and encourage other countries around the world to follow in their footsteps. But why does any of this matter? How is it going to affect any of us? The environmental effects of the IRA bill may possibly change the course of all of our lives. No matter where you live in the United States, there are now programs available to benefit your community during the shift towards a brighter and more environmentally friendly future. Firstly, disadvantaged communities will receive funding and initiatives specifically designed to address environmental and health issues caused by climate change and fossil fuels. These initiatives will decrease pollution near schools and make housing more energy efficient. What's even better is that these programs will also create over 20,000 jobs in these communities. And secondly, cities will be provided with the financial support to electrify the public transport system implement more public charging stations, award incentives for zero emission garbage trucks and buses, and expand urban forests that can help reduce temperatures to safeguard residents from extreme heat. Some of us imagined a future with flying cars, but I think the real utopia here could be an all-electric city. And lastly, rural communities will be provided with the funding to enhance wildfire resilience, provide assistance during droughts, and transition from cold-fired power to cleaner energy sources, and additionally create over 69,000 jobs in these communities. Remember the California wildfires? Yeah, let's not repeat that again. As an avid traveler, I have firsthand experience watching some rural communities use traditional methods such as burning coal to obtain energy, and many times these methods are not at all sustainable, so this bill will help these communities transition to more sustainable practices. Just imagine a future where it snows every winter, summers stay mild, and the oceans are cool and clean and people are happy. The earth is happy, the plants are happy, and we are happy. Each step we take towards climate action brings us closer to this utopian goal. But like anything else, there is room for improvement. We can't get anywhere unless we have goals in mind and are always craving more success. As we now know, the IRA bill focuses on providing incentives to promote the adoption of cleaner energy alternatives. In addition to this bill, some scientists are considering the concept of taxing carbon, which is a pretty interesting system. It kind of works like karma, and instead of just rewarding good companies, it penalizes bad companies. Companies that burn fossil fuels and rely on non-renewable carbon sources are taxed. This process is called carbon pricing. Do you listeners think it would be better to initiate carbon pricing throughout the global economy in addition to the IRA bill? Just think about it. We'll discuss more about carbon pricing in our future episodes, so if this concept intrigues you, you're in luck. While the introduction of these new incentives and programs is promising, there is still more work to be done in order to mitigate the severe consequences of climate change and ensure a sustainable environment for your future kids and grandkids or your future dog kids if you're a dog person. Listeners, what do you think the future has in store for sustainability? We've taken on large steps for climate conservation, but like I mentioned before, there's always more we can do to preserve the planet we call home. Now for the answer to today's trivia question. It may surprise you, but the answer was all of the above. Nitrous oxide, methane, and water vapor are all greenhouse gases that blanket the earth and increase the temperature throughout the world. These gases normally serve to maintain a warm and habitable climate for humans, but human activities have increased the excessive emission of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere beyond what the earth can support, thus resulting in the world-famous climate change. Do you normally live in a cold and dry climate but haven't experienced snow this year? That's all because of global warming. If you live on the coast, have you experienced increased sea level and more storms and hurricanes? Global warming again. As you can see, several small effects of human activity can make a huge impact on the health and safety of Earth's inhabitants. But fear not, gradual changes are being made to counteract these challenges. In an ever-changing and constantly warming world, 
it's important to be grateful for the actions and policies that are being implemented to care for the earth and make it a more sustainable place to live. Well, that's it for today's episode. And as always, invest your sense in climate defense.